Hi everyone, it's Amy here from the blog I Think Therefore I Teach. Well, what a week it has been. We got the grand announcement on Monday about your 2022 exam for religious studies and what a shock it was. Personally, I was expecting very little. I was expecting to have to wade through unclear advice from the exam board. I was not expecting the clear cut message that we got. I was also not expecting them to take topics out. So this PowerPoint, I've created a PowerPoint for you to help explain what you need to do, what you don't necessarily need to do, and then my advice with how to deal with the current situation. But this is really good news. This is really good news. However, there are things you do need to be aware of as well. Um, as far as the exam is concerned, as far as we can tell, your exam is going to go ahead as planned in June. So your three exams that you'll do, one in each of the areas. So as far as we can now tell, these exams are going to go ahead as previous years pre-COVID with these amendments that have been done. So let me make myself smaller and we'll get cracking. Religious studies then, oh I should be 2022 not 2020 exam session, uh, gosh no, 2022, it's probably because it feels like it's 2020 since we've lost so many exam years, 2022 exam session updates everything you need to know. So starting with philosophy, the topics that they have specified, the exam board have specified, are Plato, Aristotle, teleological, cosmological, problem of evil and nature of God. Those are the topics you need to revise. The pointers that you need to consider and be aware of. First things first, you need to know these topics inside out. You really need to delve deep into these topics and really, truly know them. You need to know original text. You need to be able to quote original text for those top grades. So you need to know Plato's Republic. You need to know metaphysics for Aristotle. You need to know um, uh, natural theology for Paley. You need to know, you need to know consolation of philosophy for, for Boethius and nature of God. You need to know your original text so that you can quote them and you understand the context in which they were written. Um, so leading on to the next one, you need to know the context of their work. Why did Paley write for the theological argument? Why did Aquinas talk about the cosmological? What is the context of their arguments? You need to know the big picture now. This is these topics are what are going to consume the next few months of your life. You need to really know them. Uh, be prepared for comparison questions or questions one to two topics. What I mean by that is you might get a question that asks you to compare Plato with Aristotle. So the form of the good is more convincing than the uh, prime mover or something like that. So you need to be prepared that you might get a comparison question and therefore you need to know the language for a comparison question. Both do this, one does this, a similarity, a difference, etc. Or top question one, two, two topics. So a question asking um, for you to critically assess the um, arguments for existence of God from observation, meaning that you can talk about both theological and cosmological. You need to know your keywords. Keywords is a big marker so knowing the words that go with them so knowing for example the fallacy of composition the fallacy of the affirmation um uh, the affirmation of the consequent for your cosmological argument knowing knowing those key words is really important there is absolutely no room for errors this is one of the downfalls of the making your revision easier. You cannot make any mistakes at this point because it will cost you dearly. You cannot rem forget acquire, um, Aristotle, sorry, his four causes. You cannot confuse Hume's criticisms against the theological argument with his criticism against cosmological. There is no room for error at this point. Um, Theological forget more of ourselves. Um, you also need to watch problem of even a nature of God. These are deceivingly difficult topics. Um, they're harder essays to write. Problem of evil is certainly one of mine that my struggle struck my students struggle with. Um, you need to know who says what. Um, you need to know, for example, the difference between evidential and um, logical in the problem of evil. You need to really know these topics. You also, I would advise you practice. Do not go into that exam without practicing the nature of God, for example. Um, you might know the topic, you might know them well, but writing them is a completely different kettle of fish. 
ethics ethics disappointingly not much has been taken out of ethics why because of sex ethics sex ethics means that you need to learn all four of your normative ethics that you do in the first year that means natural law situation ethics kant and utilitarianism without sex ethics you'd have only had to have done two of them uh, natural law and situation ethics for euthanasia so you pretty much have to learn all of ethics uh, they specify euthanasia meta ethics conscience and sex ethics what that means is it could go one of two ways you will not have a question specifically on natural law um, the hierarchy of laws you will have one on Kant and categorical imperative what you might get though is a question on Kant's approach to homosexuality or Kant is the best approach when dealing with issues surrounding sex ethics therefore you need to know Kant now some might say that you don't need to know Kant in as much detail as doing a topic on, a, on its own I would say you need to know that topic for me, if I was reading a, a sex ethics question on Kant, I'd still want to see the categorical imperative of universalizability. I'd still want to see Kant's examples of universalizability being applied. I would still like to see higher and lower pleasures for utilitarianism and Bentham's hedonic calculus with specific links and examples. So my advice is you do need to know them and you do need to know the normative well. Um, do, do, do. make sure you practice application so euthanasia and sex ethics are both application topics what that means is you are applying normative ethics you are applying natural law situation ethics for example to a specific situation euthanasia and sex ethics what that means is it gets an awful lot harder application are some of the hardest essays you will write why because you are juggling two topics now you're not just talking about meta ethics you're not just talking about aquinas and conscience you're talking about both natural law potentially in a comparison with another one as well to do with euthanasia that gets tricky there are a lot of videos i've posted on youtube um, to help with application how to write application essays so i do recommend you check those out um, also at this point i will mention to keep an eye on the blog because i'll be able to update the blog a lot more regularly than i will be able to do videos so keep an eye on the blog for um uh, support so i'm going to do something where i look at um past exam questions that have been asked look for patterns look for gaps things like that i'll be be able to blog about that easily then i'll be able to do a video about it so do keep an eye on the blog um meta ethics is notoriously unpopular uh, but it's a good one for essays do not discredit meta ethics it's actually relatively straightforward meta ethics is not that hard you also have your evaluation built into it as in which one is better? Is intuitionism better than emotivism? There's your argument. You've got evaluation built in. Um, is, you know, if the question was specific on ethical naturalism, you compare that to one of the other two to say whether it's better or worse. It's not a hard topic, isn't that? Students don't like it, but it's a really good one for structure, for good answers, for good essays, for good marks. Christian thought. Christian thought is probably the one that uh, has been dealt with in the best way, as in you have the least topics to learn for Christian thought. They have removed most topics from this area. However, the topics they have chosen are a bit flat, as in person of Jesus, again, that one's been on quite a few previous exams, and Bonhoeffer, is always on Bonhoeffer has been on so many previous exam papers I think he's pretty much been on every single exam paper since the new spec changes give or take uh, a year or so but they're a bit on the dull side no knowledge of God naturally revealed is not really one you can get your teeth stuck into the best one in there is gender and theology but that comes with its own problems I was just I was a bit disappointed obviously I was pleased on the day and I was pleased they've taken topics out to make your revision easier I was disappointed that things like liberation theology and pluralism were taken out however why because they've just got substance they've got argument they've got names they've got links you can make they just make for a decent essay Personal Jesus is probably one of my favourite topics out of the Christian thought areas because it is interesting, you know, Jesus is the rebel idea, did Jesus know he was the son of God? It's interesting, but the second year ones just do have a bit more substance to them. But never mind, this is what we've got, this is what we deal with. So you need to watch Gender and Theology. Gender and Theology is a minefield. It is 
ginormous as a topic. It is huge and um, so big that I even make it into two PowerPoints because it is such a big area. What that means is you have 40 minutes to write an essay. You need to be very selective, very clear and answer the specific question. So, for example, if it's on daily, stick with daily. If it's Ruther, stick with Ruther. If it asks you to say that daily is better than Ruther or Ruther is better than daily, focus on the way the question is structured. If it's daily is better than Ruther, daily is your focus. If the question is Ruther is better than daily, Ruther is your focus and daily then goes against her along the way. So that one is very easy to get carried away with. Make your notes as simple as possible uh, for that one. Make sure you know the key arguments as well. Um, knowing the other DCT topics will help. For example, moral principles is really dull, but getting a few key words, a bit of sola scriptura, knowing which one focuses on tradition, which one focuses on text, talking a little bit about um, media and immediate revelation, knowing how to talk about these things will really help within your um, Christian thought essays that you've got to do. Um, also, there are lots of marks available for these topics, um, as in, obviously, there's no more marks, there's 40 marks, there's no more marks for these than any others. But I, what I mean is students don't necessarily like writing these essays because they're not quite like philosophy or ethics essays. But that means it's so open for discussion. You can bring all sorts into these essays, all sorts of wider reading, wider understanding, wider knowledge. You can really run with these essays. Well, certainly the first three out of the fourth gender and theology, I'd contain it. But you can really you know, bring an awful lot of things into these essays. Um, a good discussion with wider understanding goes a long way. My overall thoughts then. I am shocked and surprised that topics have been removed at all, but I am happy about it. Currently, I am mourning the loss of a few topics, as I've said, and um, there is a few curveballs as well to be careful of. Plato and Aristotle are two topics I always say to my students to avoid. Why? Because they're just so easy. Plato and Aristotle are your easiest topics. That's why your teachers probably started the course with those topics. They are notoriously easy. It also might mean they ask you a trickier question. So be, so be, be ready for that. Um, a number of years ago, when I worked with the exam board, marking for the exam board, um, they wrote a question on Plato's analogy of the cave or something like that. About 95% of students answered that question to the point where the examiners were like, oh my goodness, I can't read any more Plato. What that means is they're aware of that situation. It won't stop them from asking you that question. But if 95% of the country write a Plato answer, you need to make sure yours are in that top quarter of answers. You need to make sure your answers are the best they can be um, because there's so much to compare them with um, as far as across the country. Um, so be ready for a hard question or tough grade boundaries. I'll come back to that in a second. Application answers, so sex ethics and euthanasia are also the hardest, some of the hardest to write. Um, you also need to make sure you have synoptic links, especially in your uh, Christian thought topics. Synoptic links means that you, I do advise you learn the other topics that have been removed. So for example, religious language has been removed. However, language games, verification principle, analogy, these are brilliant for synoptic links. Language games comes in all over the place. So you could say how Aquinas is playing the faith language game for cosmological, whereas Hume is coming from, from an empirical standing point. But then you could counter that by saying, but because Aquinas is using his empiricism to work this out, it therefore works. Things like that make your evaluation very clever. Um, if your teachers don't cover these areas, obviously you can find the videos on here that go over these other pointers that your teachers may no longer cover now because they're not essential for the exam. Uh, but knowing the other topics does really help. Synoptic links are what get you your A's and your A stars. The examiners want a holistic view of the course. What that means is they need you to have an understanding of not just Aquinas in natural law but Aquinas as a whole and so knowing the other subjects and the other topics will really help boost up your essays. My advice is do not ignore any of the topics. 
absolutely not. You need to revise all the ones they've specified. It is a huge risk to ignore any of them. Yes, they're going to ask you three out of four questions, but what happens if one of them questions is a stinker and you haven't learnt the other topic? What happens if they you don't learn cosmological and they ask a question on um, arguments from observation requiring or certainly implying both of them? Um, what happens if they ask you to compare Plato and Aristotle? So it's a huge risk to ignore any of the topics. They've made your revision easy, easier, don't make your revision even easier by being lazy and cutting any out. You need to learn them all. That is certainly my advice anyway. Examiners can ask more than one question on a topic. That's also another reason why you cannot ignore any of the topics. They have the ability and the freedom to ask you two questions on sex ethics, for example. You can answer them both as well, that's fine. You don't have to just answer one or not the other. But what that means is you have to know those topics. It's very unlikely. Then probably very much not. 5% of me believes that they would because it's just mean. But they can still. You have to be aware of that. Um, read the other missing topics to find synoptic links. So language games or verification principle work well with evaluation. Or liberation works well with Bonhoeffer and person of Jesus. Do wider reading. By cutting out some of the topics, they have made your revision essentially easier. So that this means you need to compete more in the exam for these top grades. Um, what that means, and so let me just explain. Making your revision easier has not made your exam easier. You still have to answer three essays out of four questions three times. Once for philosophy, once for ethics once for Christian thought, unless we, of course, get any more updates. What that means is your exam is still hard. What it also means is every student nationally also now has easier revision. When it comes to it and your essays are marked, your essays are marked each out of 40 and you will get a raw mark. Then marks are all then put together, so all the students across the country, and that they rank order. That's how they work out what is the A star, what's the A stars for that year, what's the A grids, what's the B grids. You can't all just get A stars, A's and B's. There has to be some distinction between grades and marks in order for it to be fair on universities and the application process. So what that means is you need to get into those A's and those B's and those A stars. You need to compete with everybody else that's got easier revision now and you need to work harder than you probably would have had to have done with all the topics to make sure that you know that, that topic, not just well, but inside out, in order to really confirm your place in that top ranking. Moving forward then, check out the playlist on YouTube. I've made a new playlist where it's specifically the topics to do with your 2022 RS exam. So I've created one that all the videos that are relevant for you have been put into that playlist. So use that one to help you. Every time I do a video as well, I will add it to that playlist. So I'm going to do more five minute summaries. I'm going to do um, more where I look. Uh, I'll do more PowerPoints with the video support for the ones that are missing. So there'll be a lot more videos coming your way. I'll finish off nature of God at some point so keep an eye on that playlist to help you I'll make sure there are powerpoints with videos as I've just said I'll be looking into previous questions to see patterns and gaps I've mentioned that as well and that'll be more likely to be on the blog than a video um, you need to practice essays especially application and harder topics like problem of evil and nature of God um, so you need to make sure that you practice you need to make sure that you plan them you need to be prepared for any eventuality in that exam any question you know the good the bad and the ugly and um, finally you need to focus on really knowing these topics synoptic links and wider reading you have a huge job ahead of you However, saying that, you have three months. You have three months, so February, March, April, May, well, about four months, but you won't have all that as contact time with your teachers because you'll have about four weeks off between now and then. So you have four months, three months contact time with your teachers. That's plenty of time if you start 
now. You have to start now. You have to organise your folders with these topics. You have to start working through the areas. Uh, you have to start making yourself a revision plan. I personally would start with ethics. Start with ethics because that's the biggest one. Make sure that you know them, practice your application, then move on to one of the other areas. Make sure that you test yourself along the way. Don't just you know, create fabulous, beautiful revision posters and cards. You have to make sure it's actually in your brain. Um, the exam opens up the goalposts for everybody. You can all get A's and A stars. You you all have the opportunity now to do so well in this in these exams. You just got to put the work in now. So it is so doable. They've made your revision easier, but it means that you are going to have to do a little bit of legwork to really find out about these people in a bit more detail. Hopefully this has answered a few questions. Hopefully this has helped. If you do have any comments, problems or anything like that, just pop me a comment underneath. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on any of the regular updates I'm going to try and do. Um, and like the video if, it, if you have found it useful. Otherwise, thank you very much everyone. Good luck with your revision. Good luck in those exams and I'm sure you will hear from me soon. Thanks everyone. Thanks very much everyone. Bye for now.